So, uh, Seppi, thank you for having me in your, in your fine home here. And, uh, what, it used to be Grahamstown. Now it's something else. What, what, it's Maracanda? What Makanda. It? Makanda? Yeah. Did you say Makanda? Makanda, yes, yeah. Uh, you don't have a, a, a deal with Disney or something like that. <laughs> no, no, no. Makanda, what, but isn't that the guy that swam in the, from Robin Island or something like that? What, what, yeah. What's, the, what, what's this cat? That's, that's a guy that's a Makanda, Kanmele. That's a guy that uh, swam, escaped from Robin Island. He was part of that group that escaped, uh -huh. but his story was that he drowned. Um, he held on to the rock and encouraged the others to swim, oh. swim ashore and... So he was chief, he was chief to the end? Yep. <laughs> oh, wow. For his people, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's a, that's a little drink of water here if you don't mind. Yeah. This is, what is it, what is this? Organic aloe, aloe vera drink, organic aloe pieces, mango flavor. I like mango flavor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's got that little aftertaste. What the heck's in this thing? <laughs> they got a fancy thing. Guess what? It's it's water, mm -hmm. fructose, sugar. It's like getting sugar, sugar, and you mm -hmm. can, I can taste the fructose. Oh well, I gotta drink something. Don't need that right there. <laughs> but I, I need it. Um, the reason why I'm here is to talk to you yeah. about not Makanda. <laughs> that blows my mind. You know how much it blows my mind. But as you may or may not know, there's a movement that started about well, it started being. Well, Research about two two years ago. Now, I have been following. There's this guy uh, called the Funky Academic Irony that I used to follow, and then at the same time, I found this woman named Yvette Cornell. And it was interesting because at some particular point, uh, uh, they both got together uh, and did a program together. They would do separate programs, and she was on this guy's this other guy's channel. And then she has this thing called Breaking Brown. And then. Uh, so then they, they, they sort of say split, but, but you know, they went their separate ways and she just did Breaking Ground. And then she started really at this particular point to do this thing, uh, that started this movement. It's called, um, if I can see it, oh, here we go, ADOS. I don't know if you can see this, but uh, there are North American descendants of chattel slavery. Hmm. Okay. They do ADOS mean uh, American descendants of slavery. Now remember, it's slavery, which is the institution, not slaves, which is the person, the individual. So we're talking about institutional kind of things like that. So I just want to show you that. Now, of course, you know, I, 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 I record usually from a uh, from a thing I call uh, the uh, the desk of ADOS. You know, hmm. Americans. Stands for uh, if you say Americans descendants. Of, um, of child slavery. Mm. Now it's important because a lot of people get confused. There's a lot of other movements there, and they actually is, the movement is being criticized. Believe mm. it or not, hey, wait a second. Hey, no black people, we're so blah 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 blah. Because all this does is accurately name us in a, in a, in 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 a, in a sense of um, what we call uh, lineage, mm. because we haven't really. We haven't been able to delineate, or we haven't been able to accurately name ourselves. Mm. And you hear African American, yeah. sounds good. But remember, Africa is a continent. America is a country. Mm -hmm. So it's like you're being African. I mean, that's kind of strange. But you know, we held with that for a while. I won't go into the whole lineage of other names we call ourselves. But um, so so anyway, so, so so that's what it is. Now I'm going to tell you a little about about the movement because I, I, because basically you're an African. Mm. <laughs> I mean, a real African African, uh, and I'm or well, used to be African American. I'm still African American. But we've accurately named our our tribe. You know, our, our clan, if you will, as as descendants of, of chattel slavery. Now, now you you have a clan. What, what's, what's your clan name? Uh, Changisa. It goes farther back than that. Yeah, yeah. Mwave, you, yeah. Give it me goes a way way back. It's like Mwave, among Mwave with the gray head. It was a, a group of gray haired men after whom the clan then got named, and they became gray haired men and women and. They spread and you know and, and but but you retain that clan name, yeah, yeah. even though you're uh, you're in South Africa yeah. and so you're a South African but you're also that you're an African but you're also that's the the essence yeah. of what you do yeah. so this is important to me because we're getting we're, we're getting sniped I say sniped from a bunch of factions and yeah. I think the let me just cut to the chase I think the problem is this look 
No, you, you're, you're South African. You're part of the struggle. I mean, you know, you're, you're a well-known struggler, if I could say that, from the student days. And uh, here's the way I look at it. Let's say, for instance, let me just do it this way. The, the term I want to bring up is tip of the spear. Tip of the spear. Now, just, just, it's, what, what does tip of the spear mean? The mm. Tip of the spear is like, it's like the, yeah, it's like the tip, the, the very, you know, the sharp end of the spear. That's right, the, the, the vanguard, if yes. you will. You know, the, I won't say shock troops, because that's a different whole thing, mm -hmm. but the vanguard, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing. For years, because, you know, we, we have a, little, lot, a lot of movements started in the States. Yeah. Like, like, for instance, the Pan-Africanists mm. would say, oh, Pan-Africanism. But Pan-Africanism did not start in Africa. Uh -huh. It started in the States, you know? Yeah. And, and, and it, of course, you know, it's, mm -hmm. I think it's more of an intellectual, whatever movement. Mm -hmm. But they, for a long time, you know, they yeah. they were struggling whatever it is. Uh, fact, let me ask you, what, what is there a, a what do, what do Africans think of Pan Africanism? Yeah. Pan Africanism, in fact, for, for um, Africans in South Africa, because we the, our own um, introduction to Pan Africanism happens incidentally through the independent, amongst other things, the independent churches. Of course, mm -hmm. I mean, even maybe way back before that, it was also through um, movements of of by sea of mm. of even african americans who came and docked in the cape mm. and you know then s decided to stay in the communities of district six in cape town mm. and came with uh, the ideas of marcus gave mm. um, and 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 then of course the churches especially the ethiopian church mm -hmm. was one of the early because that's all so the, 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 the rasta connection yeah but let me give you this little caveat it's interesting because all over the planet wherever you go you can find a chinese presence mm -hmm. okay the chinese presence whatever chinatown whatever it is wherever we go on the planet yeah. to me the only other thing that rivals that yeah. is the rasta community yeah, yeah. there's rasta communities all over the world right, yeah, yeah. that's fascinating, fascinating to me. yeah mm -hmm. more than well, okay. and i guess the rasta is considered as a pan-african so i'm not really sure but yeah. but i'm talking about the general populace of of africa to yeah. all the countries do they have a pan-african consciousness do they really push for that they 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 used to be a very strong pan-african consciousness i think over time that's kind of been eroded by a lot of values of materialism and mm. also you know there's a political uh, values of of uh, I mean for lack of a better word for me it's like imperialism really because mm. it's like how we got misled mm. in, in you know, our ideas where we see ourselves as a nation state as opposed to the rest of the continent mm. you know, and even better off as opposed to the rest of the continent so those I, that ideology seeps through uh, so yeah. it's, it's been adjusted, I want to say adjusted, I'm being polite, uh, by basically, uh, I, I call it uh, uh, runaway capitalism, you know what I mean, whole hog capitalism, uh, pred predatory capitalism. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about real, real capitalism is real capitalism, but that has been, it's been gamed, mm -hmm. let me put it that way. Yeah. And that is a serious problem that we have today. Yeah. Now, what I want to say is that if this is the tip of the sphere, let's say this was uh, Pan-Africanism, tip of the sphere, right? Then the next tip of the sphere, not the next, but there's been a lot of tip of the spheres. Uh, there, there, there would be like a, a, a Marxism, black mm. Marxism, you know what I mean? There, there might even be, I'm just putting up things, you know, tip, it's like a tip. Uh, it could be like a, 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 a black socialism, mm. you know what I mean, like that. But what's happened with these movements, if you will, these philosophies, you know, mm. these ways of thinking, you know, they haven't really taken... Uh, Black Americans, if you will, or what we're now saying, you know, uh, uh, American descendants of child, of child slavery, out of their condition. Okay, don't don't get me wrong. You can do it. Now, uh, through the efforts of Yvette Cornell and uh, and, uh, and, and, uh, and attorney uh, Antonio Moore, uh, we have a movement that is now the tip of the sphere. In other words, these other spheres, I think they're sort of weirdly jealous or something like that because they no longer are the tip of the sphere. Mm -hmm. Because they're, they, you know, just, just like any modern thing, you put new and improved on something and everybody's, hey, new and improved, let me try it, you know? So, I mean, but it was interesting, a lot, uh, when the Pan-Africanists and, and the, or the, the black Marxists or whatever you wanted, the, the black socialists, uh, they may have had an intellectual uh, push behind them. 
but their data was sort of suspect. I mean, you know, the, the data never really came through. Or well, even this intellectual push it never really came through. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, we got W.E.B. Du Bois. You, uh, even, guess what? People don't even understand that Booker T. Washington was a Pan-Africanist. Mm. He started Liberia. He, you know, so there's a lot of people with Pan-Africanists, uh, I'll say, uh, undercover, whatever have you. But it's always been there. But they haven't been able, as a tip, when they were the tip of the sphere, they haven't been able to to use that uh, uh, spear ex uh, uh, effectively mm. to push us through to liberation. Yeah. Yeah. With this movement, you know, uh, with the, with the, I'll just go pick up any square now, you know, with this movement, the ADOS, it looks like we can push through because we have, first of all, we have identifiable heads, a male and a female. It's very important to me. Well, very important, right? Identifiable. We know that what they've done, but they're backed up. They're just a figure. Oh, so they just figure. They, they, they articulate very well what the movement is about because they, they did it. But what really is is that they're backed up by scholarship and data. Uh, the, 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 one of the, the, the proponents is a guy named uh, 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 Sandy Darity out of out of uh, out of Duke University. Another one is Derek Hamilton out of the New School in New York. Right now, what's important about this is that. They've been doing this academic work for years. But like, you know how academia is. Come on now. Academia is academia. Mm -hmm. you know, even, even when I think of uh, Zora Neale Hurston, you know what I mean? She did academic, but then she had to turn her, her academic work into a popular novel. Mm -hmm. So it's like this is, this, this is the way we, I don't want to say popularized, but it's basically popularizing the thing. And what's happened is a lot of forces have come together at one time, namely social media, you know, internet, whatever have you. So people can, so now you just don't get it from from uh, the people they say are leaders. You know, like they might say, oh, this person here, uh, I'm a, I don't really, I do need to name names. Uh, can, they might say like Michael Eric Dyson, you know, because he's always on TV, let him speak for this. And he'll say something that's, maybe he hasn't looked at, the, but we have a website. www.ados101, that's a hint, dot com. The basics of it, you know what I mean? Oh, by the way, I say, these people, these, a lot of people are sniping at the thing. I say ADOS is bulletproof. <laughs> That's a little phrase of mine. I'll, I'll take a little bit of credit for that. Anyway, so, so what, what has happened is a lot of people, uh, a lot of faux pas people, I don't know why, I think they're angry at us because we've accurately named ourselves. Therefore, we can, now that we've named ourselves, no one's named us, we've named ourselves, we can now move forward without ultimate liberation, mm -hmm. right? A lot of these folks, I can namely say, I'm just going to pick a system on Africa, let me lead to Africa. Say the Nigerians, they say, oh, this, we're supposed to be all black, you know, you shouldn't do that, blah, blah, blah. And, and I look at them, and you know what I tell them? It's very simple. I said, wait a second, you... In fact, they're the worst. I'm not saying they're the worst. Here's why it's so bad. Mm. Uh, you know, Ken Sherriero is a playwright. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he got killed mm. by this, was the Shell people, the mm. Shell oil company, for defending his homeland. Whatever. He got executed. Mm. The Pan-Africans didn't say anything about that. They didn't do anything about that. Mm. You know? Mm. So those, the, now the Nigerians come to the United States under the guise of being black. Right? They take certain positions and they get certain opportunities that we have struggled for for years mm -hmm. and they've taken our place because, well, the powers of being allow that to happen. Mm -hmm. right? If I see them in the street, I say, wait a second, you, you didn't defend Ken, right? Ken Sarebo, and now you come here and you're paying taxes to the same government that destroyed your thing. So in fact, you're almost like weirdly, it's worse than counter-revolutionary. It's like you, you are basically going against your own people and now are funding mm -hmm. the continued you know, degradation, mm -hmm. the continued colon colonial whatever of your own people, which is kind of strange to me. So I tell them straight up, I tell them straight up, you're all the cowards. Mm -hmm. You're cowards and not only that, then you come and try to usurp us. And then they say, oh, you're, you're talking against us. Well, no, we didn't start this, right? We were happy doing what we were doing. And you came in and tried to undermine what you You need to wrap yourself in the Nigerian flag. And they have done this, you know, go and knock on the, you know, the England's door and say, hey, give us back our stuff. You know, same thing for anybody else, Haitians, whatever. They, they're, they're all in the, we're all Pan-Africanists, what I'm trying to say. Even ADOS is actually weirdly in the pantheon in, in Pan-Africanism. 
Right? But you all got some other things to do. Pan African, you know what I think they should do? They just need to hang out with the, well, beat up on the Catholic Church. <laughs> they need to beat up on them because they're the ones that really colonized a lot of, a lot of stuff. Like a, a, even the Arabs, they need to beat up on the Arabs who slave, enslaved, whatever. I'm not going to get into all this stuff. But my point really is, I want you to, to understand this because I don't want you to hear it from some third whatever, you can go for yourself, you know, www.ados101.com and learn what, what's going on. A lot of these people are just talking about what we call the side of their neck in terms of what, what, what's going on. So, so basically, this is a movement for, for reparation. Now, reparation, everybody thinks, as soon as you say reparation, they think money, 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 money. No, as, as Yvette Cornell would say, you know, you, if you cut somebody, right. the momentary, it takes a moment to cut, right. but to heal that cut takes a much longer time. So basically, uh, 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 black Americans, you know, uh, uh, autochthonous, well, not autochthonous, but, 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 but descendants of chattel slavery, they've been cut, they've been wounded many, 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 many times. And we're, we're, we're talking from being captives in, 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 in Africa, to being, um, to being kidnapped through the Americans, to being enslaved in America, all kinds of, and then after you know, slavery, then you got the whole antebellum period, and the, all these things, they, they call them the black, all kinds of stuff, the black codes, reincarnation, all kinds of weird stuff, and plus, you know, don't not to mention the lynchings and the red, what they call redlining, where you devalue with a neighborhood, where you basically the gov the government made this do this. The government was firmly behind it when they asked when they said we was going to forty acres in the mule. It's the government that stopped that forty acres in the mule thing. All all this stuff, you know, being set upon by other citizens. We're citizens. We were citizens. Been set upon by other citizens, destroying our property, whatever have you. That, that's a government. Help do that. After World War, during the New Deal, you know, we purposely, we, most of us domestic, purposely cut out of that new, so-called New Deal with Franklin Roosevelt. The whole thing with the, after World War II, when the, the soldiers are coming home and the white people get all these homes and stuff like that, we were excluded from that. All kinds of things. So for almost like decade after de well, not gonna, yeah, decade after decade, we were just set upon, and now we're at this particular point that people say, oh, look at the, I mean, the, 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 the so-called immigrants that, that, that come in, they say, oh, look at you black people, you know, blah, 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 blah. Well, you ain't struggle. You don't know what our, what you, in fact, you haven't even studied what our struggle is. Yeah, you know about Martin Luther King, or you might, some, something like that, but that's, our struggle is much deeper than that, you know? And so, uh, and so, 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 so our problem really is that I think it'll be sorted out pretty soon. Because when people realize, when, I, when we say to Haiti, wrap yourself in the Haitian flag and deal with France, who when you got your freedom, you, I, don't to, I have to say this, you stupidly paid them reparations as you won the war. How is that possible? Did Dessalines really want that? You know? I mean, a lot of these countries, you know what I mean? They, they went, I mean, even in, look here in Africa, look at Zimbabwe, you know? Everybody talks, look, I, I've shaken hands with Kenneth Kuhunda. I love Kenneth Kuhunda. You know what I mean? He's the one that got Mugabe out of jail. And when, you, when, they, when, they, when they used to talk about Mugabe, they, they were talking about Mugabe pre-1980. After 1980, that boy was doing some shady stuff. Let me put it that way. But also, he still was worshipping the queen. He was just dumbfounded how the queen could turn, could turn them. We could have told them, hey, the, the American Indians would have told them, hey, the, the white man speak with fork and tongue, you know. But they didn't listen. They don't want to listen to that, you know. And so what happens is they're another country, you know. If you, well, let me leave them alone. They were set upon enough, and they have their problems now because our CIA, whatever, 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 keeps on beating on them. So all I'm saying is that I want, I mean, I want you to understand because you're an African here. <gasps> I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm an I'm an American descendant of child slavery sitting in Africa talking to an African about this and I really have to ask you what you think about all this you know that's what I really really what I'm here for right? but I've sort of laid out everything everything else can be can can be yeah. talked about you know but this whole income disparity whatever have you it's gonna be it's gonna be a day of reckoning you know what I mean but first we have to do is get out or you can be an ally but the the, the the tip of the spear, black tip of the spear, tip of the spear is the American descendants of Chad. We're the tip of the, tip of the spear now. You had your, your other groups had their chance. What you can do is you can co continue on what you do, no problem. But you're not the tip of the spear. You don't. We, we get our marching orders from from, from Attorney Moore and uh, and Miss Yvette. 
That's who we get our marching orders from. This 